Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things, or rather What I Paint Things With, because this esoteric group of troublemakers that are whizzing around right now aren't themselves the subject of this video, but instead what they've all been shaded with. Now sometimes I'll mention a goop called marine juice, and uh, folks tend to get quite curious about it, asking me what on earth is marine juice, how do you make it, and does it matter if you use free range or factory farmed marines? And uh, I'm going to answer all of those questions today. So the examples here have all been shaded using that goop, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that towards the end, and let you have a better look at each of them. So don't worry if they're whizzing around a bit too quick right now. Now this one turned into a little bit more talking than I'd expected, um, but there are going to be timestamps, so if you want to jump around and just get straight to the good stuff, go ahead. But I'm also going to compare quite a few of the shades that are on the market today, so you might find it interesting. All the same, let's get started. So in front of me here, what I've got to demonstrate is five identical dudes, all sprayed in white. Now these fellas are the Solaran Dragoons, which I've actually done a video on in the past. I'll pop a link to those in the description so that you can check that video out, and also go and pick some up if you like. Uh, now they are 3D prints, these came off of my Mars 3, but I'm pretty certain that you can pick up um, physical prints as well. All the same, it's really just for the purposes of demonstrating the differences between some of these shades. So I'm going to start off by showing you three that you probably already know quite well. I'm going to show you Agrax Earthshade, Strong Tone, and then Umber Wash from Vallejo. Reason being, they're going to be really useful as baselines. Something that you're familiar with, which you've probably seen on the table in front of you at some point, and then we can use those as comparisons for the Marine Juice. Now I'll make sure that there are timestamps so that you can skip ahead to the Marine Juice if you already know what this looks like, but it might be useful for comparison's sake. So we're going to start off with Agrax Earthshade. Now I'm using the new formulation, and that's going to be a recurring theme here, mostly because if you walk into a store or order this online, this is the version that you should be getting. Um, you're going to find it a little bit difficult to find the old stuff anymore, so it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to demonstrate with that. I've loaded up my brush, and let's start from the top, and apply this over the whole miniature. Now the main difference between the old and the new stuff, in my opinion at least, tends to be that this new stuff feels a little bit more gloopy. Um, the medium in it is now a bit more similar to the uh, contrast medium, so it clings a little differently. Like it still pulls in the recesses the way that you'd want a shade to, uh, but it does, I guess it tightens across flat surfaces slightly more than the old stuff used to, which uh, if you want a like a grubby sort of color for an entire miniature, Agrax Earthshade is still your place to go, uh, but it's not always what I want, and that's kind of the story with Marine Juice that we're going to get to. But anyhow, let's finish this off and let that dry. Okay, and there is Agrax Earthshade. As you'll see, it does bring down the color quite a bit. That being over white, you can imagine what it does to most colors, but of course that's what we use it for in a lot of instances. Particularly with my Guardsmen, I like a nice dark recess. Um, it is something which is very useful if you thin it down a little with Lamian Medium. And particularly using a medium like that, you'll actually bring it back to the consistency of the uh, previous version of Agrax Earthshade. So if you like how the old stuff flowed, uh, compared to this more gloopy stuff, then just a couple of dots of medium in what you're using will come out fine. So we'll hold on to this fella, he is our patient zero, as it were. He's our example. Next up, what we're going to apply is Strong Tone from the Army Painter. Now this goes on exactly the same way, and like the new Agrax Earthshade, uh, Strong Tone was always a little bit gloopy. So I tend to find the best way to apply this is to put it on, wait a couple of seconds for it to settle, and then you can move it around off of areas as you need to. It's quite handy like that. So I'm going to do the same thing again. So side by side, there is our Agrax Earthshade and our Strong Tone. Now I've seen people online claim that these are the same color. Um, no, <laughs> and I quite like the the darker, almost gloomy kind of finish with Strong Tone for stuff that I want to look 
grimier, darker, more sinister, I guess is the word. It's also really useful on miniatures that you want to look like they've been painted from colder areas because they will look darker and there's not that same brownish warmth that Agrax Earthshade has. Quite useful, well worth having. Let's have a look at Umberwash. Now Umber Wash here is from the Vallejo Game Color range, and it behaves a little bit differently to the other two that you've seen so far. Uh, where those two, where they settle on a color, they will let the original color show through. A little bit tinted, so you know you'll get a brownish tint in your recesses. This instead works a little bit more like a traditional acrylic in some respects. So you'll see it does uh, flow into crevices and obviously it's working like a, a wash or a shade ordinarily would be wanting to. Uh, but because of its pigmentation, the recesses will be essentially painted a much more strong brown color. Now in practice, what this will mean is if you apply this over something really dark like black, uh, rather than the, the shaded areas looking you know, dark black, they will look much more brown. Now, that's not always a desirable result. You know, depending on what you're painting, you might want that to, to stay black. I quite like using this over stuff. Hang on a second, that's falling off. I quite like using this over stuff which I want to look grubby. Uh, because black equipment which has grimy brown recesses tends to look a little bit dirty or well-worn, and it's quite handy. Uh, the other wonderful thing with this is that it dries super matte, so you don't have to worry about whether or not it's shiny. So, side by side, here's our big three. Agrax Earthshade, Strong Tone, and then Umber Wash on the end. Now what's interesting is Umber Wash actually doesn't look as dark as it does over a painted miniature. Uh, mostly because of that effect I mentioned about how it will color your recesses more significantly than the other two will. The end result is if you put this over a painted thing, it will ordinarily look a little more like the Agrax Earthshade, um, but that is quite a nice... I like them. I like all three of them, and they've got different use cases, and part of that is really down to what you want to paint. What is the effect you're trying to achieve? So when we talk about a universal wash, like Marine Juice, how universal is it really? You know, am I just blowing smoke, or is there a good use case for it? Well, first, we're going to mix some up. In front of me here, what I have is the recipe for original recipe marine juice. Now, this was awesome because back in the day, all three bottles, Reichland Flesh Shade, Non Oil, and Lamian Medium, were the same size. Life was good. The calculation was simple. You put one of each of these into one big container, shook it up really well, and then you'd decant it back into these, and you'd have three bottles of marine juice. But then Citadel went and changed the formulation of the shades, as you've probably heard me complain about already. In particular, Null Oil changed the most. It's not very much like it used to be at all. It is a black shade, but what it does now is to flow a little more easily into recesses, and it is not as strong a black color as it used to be. So it will not work the same way using the same formulation anymore. Nolan oil is a little bit anemic compared to what it used to be. So we've got to improvise. So what is still good and dark? Dark tone. Hooray! Now I've popped the Reichland Flesh Shade off to the side because the new stuff is the same color and the consistency doesn't matter as much because we are going to bomb this with so much Lamy and Medium it will not make a difference. The dark tone as well is also a little bit more fluid, and yeah, this is going to work pretty perfectly. Now, Marine Juice has its origins with the Forge World army painting team, and the recipe for this came from an old Horus Heresy weekender where they were talking about how they blasted through so many Marines as quickly as possible, and it basically came down to using Marine Juice over very, very simple colors. If you've ever seen me do my uh, Death Guard, that's probably one of the best examples of what this is for. But now, of course, what we have is an 18 milliliter bottle, and Lamy and Medium it still comes in 24 milliliter bottles. Ugh, okay, so things get interesting. However, 
Because I am a brave sort, I have been experimenting, and it turns out what you can still do is get a bottle of Dark Tone at 18 milliliters, a new bottle of Reichland Fleshade at 18 milliliters, and just jam in all 24 milliliters of your Thamian Medium. Life will be good. So let's mix some up and pop it over one of these miniatures. So I have mixed up my new recipe marine juice, given it a really good mix. It's important that this is as thoroughly jammed together as you can get. And now we're going to jam this over our white. Now you'll see straight away, one of the big differences with this is that it is a more subtle tone. Uh, it's got kind of a reddish warmth to it. And if you've heard me use that word a lot, warmth, um, there's a reason for that. We're going to talk about that when we get to color use. Uh, it is still brown, like the black and the flesh tone give us a nice brownish color, uh, but that little bit of red to it is going to really help with whatever you're putting it over the top of. It gives it a bit more character. Now in particular, the medium will also make sure you can really bucket this on, even over white, like it'll look kind of grimy going on, uh, but the end result as it dries is going to be quite subtle. And there, once it's dried, is our marine juice. So you see it gives us nice deep shading, but it's quite subtle. And in particular, the amount of medium that we've got in there makes sure that it tends to flow away from flat areas very nicely. Meaning, if you've got parts like armor plates, or very smooth trousers, uh, uniform shirts, that sort of thing, it will flow off of those and won't tint them quite as strongly. Now, this is marine juice mark two. Uh, this is stuff which is presently available to purchase and mix up. Next to it, this is the old marine juice. And you'll see it is fractionally more red um, and not quite as dark. So there is still going to be a difference. If you want, you can tweak the recipe a little bit. Um, I might suggest maybe a fraction more Reichland Flesh Shade or just a drop or two of even red, maybe. Uh, maybe a little bit more medium in this mix, but I wanted to try and keep the ratios as simple as possible. So one bottle of each is going to give you this, and uh, I quite like it. It works in exactly the same way as the old stuff did. So let's get a look at some examples. When would you use marine juice? So first of all, and I would say hopefully most obviously, Space Marines. Uh, there are a lot of very light armored marines which can be painted very quickly using this this gunk. Um, you'll see on the white on this fella, I haven't done any highlighting. Uh, wait, I tell it like, there was a highlight on this helmet. But for the most part, that is just sprayed white, a few details painted, and then marine juice over the top. And what we have is a white marine with his gear all shaded nicely. Job done. Same too with World Eaters, Death Guard, Imperial Fists, or even something resembling ultramarines. You'll find on dark blue colors, what you end up with is a purplish tint in your recesses, which actually works super well. Now this Terry Thomas looking fella here, he is a print from the Reptilian Overlords range, the uh, Master Regiment template sets, and uh, he is mostly the Vallejo Express range with a couple of highlights, and the shade that was put over the entire miniature, once again, you can see that little bit of reddish warmth in the recesses. That's our marine juice. Works on all sorts of things. Now likewise, it doesn't just have to be 40k miniatures. This fella here is a Bavarian Grenadier from the Napoleonic period, and if you check his trousers out, they have not been highlighted at all. The whole miniature was sprayed white, given his base coats, and then marine juice. The only white that I've highlighted is on his cross belts because I wanted those to look a little bit more tidy. Uh, but those trousers, indeed most of the bits of detail on him, haven't been highlighted at all. Just his jacket and those cross belts and his face. And it doesn't even have to be an all over shade. Captain Kirk here, I did his top half, so his uniform, hair and face all got the marine juice. And then his bottom half, I used dark tone with a little bit of Lamian medium, simply because I wanted more definition on his trousers and his boots, but the top bit was going to work fine with marine juice, and I think it came out really well. So there we have it, our examples whizzing around, 
And hopefully something there does stand out as interesting because I think, sure, you could paint these more nicely. And that is always going to be true. Like the purpose of Marine Juice is not to win awards. It's to get models on the table looking all right pretty quickly. And I really think like this fella, the World Eater and the um, Death Guard in particular are exemplars of that. Not perfect, but pretty cool. And uh, an army painted like that will look the business. Marine Juice is a really useful tool for that. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, which includes my gorgeous producers showing up on screen now. Thank you very much, folks. You are the impetus for me carrying on doing this, this madness. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all. And you all enjoy the rest of your day.